All right, so in this video, we're gonna be solving the following problem. So we're given two strings, and we want to write a method to decide if one is a permutation of the other. So here we have two strings that we've defined as variables God and dog, and these two are permutations of each other because you can rearrange the letters of God to get dog and vice versa. And then these two strings here are examples of non-permutations. So there's no way in which to rearrange the letters of this string not to get top and vice versa. So these two strings are not permutations and these two are. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to approach two methods of determining whether or not a given pair of strings are permutations of each other. And we're going to start off with an approach that's going to be a little bit less optimal than the following approach, the second approach that we'll show. And we'll just show each of those and then do a little bit of a very brief analysis as to what the runtime complexity of each of the approaches will give us. So let's go ahead and define a function, which we will call is perm. And we'll actually call this is perm one, since we know we're going to define two flavors of this function. This is going to take two strings, so we'll call them string one and string two. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a bit of pre-processing on these strings. So there's just a bit of a note here uh, as well that we're going to normalize the strings to lowercase. So in both of the examples we've shown, the letters here are all lowercase, but you could have had something like this, for instance, and uh, or maybe a better example is something like this. So if we have something like that there, that would indicate that those two are going to be treated as permutations, uh, even though this G is uppercase while this G is lowercase. So we want to normalize the cases of the letters to make sure that we uh, kind of don't have to worry about that when we're processing for checking for permutations. However, I will mention that if we have something like this, where we have some extra spaces, we are going to treat spaces as actual characters. So in this case, since I've added extra spaces here, that is not going to be a permutation of dog now because there's uh, three extra spaces in this string where there's no spaces in this string down here. So we're not going to remove any spaces which you might expect from other um, problems that involve strings where we've pre-processed before. It really depends on the way in which you define the problem. Sometimes spaces may or may not be significant. This is something that you probably want to clarify with your interviewer or with the problem or whatever you're trying to do to solve this, whether it's for an assignment or whatever. So in this case, spaces are going to be significant, but case is going to be something that we're going to ignore. So I'm going to get rid of those spaces there and I'm going to, I might as well just leave that as, as that. So in this function, what we're going to do is we're going to take the first approach. Let's, before we do that, let's just pre-process the strings so they're all normalized as we want them to be. So in, in other words, we want them to be lowercase. So we're going to say string one is equal to string one dot lower. And we're going to do the same thing for string two. So we're going to say string two is equal to string two dot lower. So now both string one and string two have been converted to lowercase. And one thing that we can do right away to check whether or not string one or string two are permutations of each other is a very quick check. We can check if they're the same length. So if they're the same length, they have the potential for being permutations. But if they are not the same length, there's no way that we can arrange the characters of one of the strings into the other because there's no way that we can do a rearrangement that won't involve removing or adding a character to that string. So we're just going to have a quick check to kind of dismiss any, any strings that are not of equal length. So we're going to check if the length of string 1 is not equal to the length of string 2. If this happens to be the case, then what we'll do is we'll just right off the bat, we'll just return false. So otherwise, we'll go ahead and proceed with this, uh, with this first approach. So the first approach is we're going to consider both of the strings, string one and string two. Specifically, what we're going to do is we're going to sort them alphabetically. So the alphabetic, uh, I guess the lexicographical ordering of the strings is what we're going to be after. So we're going to use the built-in sort method in Python to sort the two strings. So as you know, a comparison-based sorting algorithm, the lower bound for that, the best that we can hope to do for comparison-based sorting is n log n. So where n is the size of the string. And at this point, after we've hit this if statement, we've come to the conclusion that the length of both of the strings is going to be the same. So we're going to refer to that size as n. So what we're going to do first is we're going to sort the strings. And then once we're, they're sorted, we're going to loop through the characters in, in the strings and then we're going to check whether or not the characters match up or not. So specifically, whether or not the characters are equal to each other. Since if they are equal and if they are sorted, uh, if they are permutations, we should get the same characters encountered at the same place in the loop. Otherwise, if they're not permutations, this won't happen. So let's go ahead and sort the strings first. So the way we can do that is we can say string one is equal to join sorted 
string one. So basically what we're doing here is the sorted function is Python's built-in sorting function. And then basically what we're doing here, since string is a string, string one is a string, we're converting it to a list because it operates on a list. We're applying that to string one, and then we're converting that sorted list back to a string. So that's essentially what this dot join is doing. So it's just removing, we're applying the sorted function to a list, converting that back to a string, and then the sorted string is stored in this string one variable. So we're gonna do the same thing for string two as well. So we're gonna go ahead and change that to string two, sort string two here. So now at this point, both of them have been sorted. So what we can do is we can say n, is equal to the length of string one. So remember, again, at this point, both of the lengths of string one and string two are assumed to be equal to each other. Otherwise, they would have uh, they would have gotten to this if statement and then the function would have returned false. So we're gonna assume that n is the length of both string one and string two. And what we're gonna do is we're going to loop through. So we're gonna say for i and range n, and we're going to check if string one of i is not equal to string two of i. So if, if the characters on these strings at this point in the iteration are not equal to each other, then we're going to return false. Otherwise, if we're able to get through this entire loop without that happening, we know the permutations, we're gonna go ahead and say return true. So let's go ahead and just test this out on the strings that we've defined up above. So I'm gonna say print is perm one, and then we're going to do that on is permutation one, the first string, and then the second string is permutation two. And then we're also going to do this on the other set of strings. So we're going to print is perm one of not permutation one and not permutation two. So I go ahead and replace that here. So I'll save that. I'll go ahead and run this Python is permutation.py. And so we see true for God and dog, and then we see false for the other uh, not and top. So that expected behavior is what we, uh, that behavior is what we expected. So let's go ahead and consider another approach. I'm just going to go ahead and write down the runtime complexity of this. So the, uh, the time complexity in this case is O of n log n. Again, that's because we're, um, the sorting method is going to take n log n to sort the strings. And then the space complexity, space complexity is going to be constant. Since we're not using any external data structures to store anything, we're just sorting and then we're looping through and we're checking whether or not the uh, characters of the strings are equal to each other once they've been sorted. So no uh, worry about space. So now let's go ahead and code up another approach which is going to be an improvement on the time complexity but is going to invoke a little bit more on the space side. So let's go ahead and call this is perm2. This is also going to take two strings. We'll call them string one and string two. And what we're going to do here is we're going to make use of a hash table. So specifically what we'll do is we'll pre-process the strings just as we did before. I'm actually going to copy these lines and put them into this function. So again, what we're doing is we're converting string one and string two to lowercase, and then we're checking just right off the bat if they happen to be uh, of equal length. So if they're not of equal length, we want to return false because they cannot be permutations of each other. So now what we're going to do is we're going to define a hash table, and we're going to go through, and we're going to check in one loop, we're going to check if the character that we're on in the loop of string one, if that's equal, if that's in a dictionary. If that is in a dictionary, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and set the value of that key that we'll set in a dictionary to one. Otherwise, if it's already in there, then we'll decrement one from that count. And we'll do the same string thing for string two. So indeed, if we have kind of a... Um, if we have a permutation, let's go back up here, we're going to have essentially kind of a canceling out effect. So in the dictionary, what we'll do is we'll start off on our loop here for the first string. We'll start off at G. We'll say, is G in the dictionary? Well, nothing's in the dictionary initially because we just declared an empty dictionary. So we'll put G in the dictionary. We'll give that a value of one. Is O in the dictionary? No, we'll go ahead and do that for O. And then D, D isn't in the, the dictionary either. So we'll go ahead and put that in as well. So we have a dictionary, D, that has a value of one for G, for the key G, one for the key of O, and one for the key of D. So then we loop through the second string and we check, we do the same check. We say, okay, is the character D in the dictionary. Well, yes it is, and actually it has a value of one. So since it's present in the dictionary, go ahead and decrement the count. So now the value for the key D is zero. So now we move on to zero to, to O. So we again make the same check. We see that O is indeed in the dictionary, it has a value of one. So since it's present, we go ahead and decrement it. So now it has a value of zero, do the same thing for G. And then at the end of the day, we've got a dictionary with just zero values. So if all of the values of the dictionary are zero, we know that we have a permutation. Let's step through this other example to see how that wouldn't end up to be the case here. So again, we have an empty dictionary. 
we start off looping through the first string and we check is n in the dictionary. Well, now it's not because we just started a loop and we're just starting on the first string here. So we put n in the dictionary and we give it a value of 1. Is o in the dictionary? No, it's not. So we do the same thing for o. So we have a dictionary now that has a key n with a value 1 and a key o with a value 1. And also now we're going to have one with a key of t and a value 1. So we move along here. Now we're on the second string. Same thing. We loop through. We check, OK, is the value t in the dictionary? Is there a key that exists in the dictionary with the value t? Indeed, there is. It has value 1, so decrement it. Same thing for o from above here. And now for p, that value is not present in the dictionary. So we go ahead and put p in the dictionary. So at the end of processing these two strings, we have a dictionary that has zeros for entries o and t, but one for value n and p. So We've checked if all of the values in the dictionary, if they're all zero, we have permutation. If not, we know that we're sort of missing this balance between these two uh, between these two counts. So since we have a value of one here and one for p, we know that these can't possibly be permutations of each other, and we return false. It's going to be kind of the general gist of how we're going to approach this second is perm function. So let's go ahead and put that into code. So what we'll do is we'll create a dictionary, which we'll call d. And then we'll go ahead and start off with the first loop. So we'll say for i in string 1. So we're going to process the characters in string 1. If i is in the dictionary, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say, OK, it's present. So decrement the count by 1. So otherwise, if that character is not in the dictionary, what we can go ahead and do is we can say d of i is equal to 1. So we'll go ahead and put a value of 1 at that place in the dictionary. So then we'll have another loop here. And what we'll do here is we'll say, and in the other loop here, we're going to have the same exact thing as we had in the first loop. So we're going to say for i in string 2, we're going to say if the character that we're on in string 2 is present in the dictionary, well, we'll go ahead and do the same thing. We'll decrement the count by 1. Otherwise, we'll say d of i is equal to 1. So now we have this dictionary, which either is going to be consisting of all zeros in the case of their permutations and not consisting of all zeros in the case where they're not. So we'll go ahead and have a check here. We'll return, we'll return all of value equal to zero. So we'll check if the values of this dictionary are equal to zero. We'll do that in kind of a list comprehension here. So we'll say for value in d dot values. So what we're doing is we're checking for every value that's present in the dictionary is the value of every single value in that dictionary equal to zero. If it is, then this is going to evaluate to true, and that therefore it is a permutation. Otherwise, this all statement is going to evaluate to false, and that will indicate that it's not a permutation. So that should be all we need there. So let's go ahead and take these lines and make sure that the second approach that we have here works as expected. So this is going to be, sorry about that, this will be is perm2. So we'll go ahead and just change the name there. We'll write that, and then we'll run it here. So is permutation 2 gives us the same results as is permutation 1. So true for God and dog, and then false for the not and top. So a very brief analysis of this approach here. The time complexity of this approach is going to be O of n, since what we're doing here is we're just having one for loop, which is going to be going through string 1, and then we have sort of an additive, uh, an additive one here, so essentially n plus n, which is going to be this um, this second loop here, again, we've determined the length of string 1 and string 2 are of size n, so that's where the n is coming from. And then our space complexity, since we're using a hash table, space complexity is going to be also of size n. So that's this dictionary here. We're kind of looping through, and we're either putting an element into the dictionary and then either uh, subtracting or putting a 1 in the place of the value for that key that we're on in either of these two loops. So we're using a, a, a linear amount of space in this approach. So that's pretty much it for this video. These are the two approaches. There's other ways to solve this problem, to be sure. So these are not the only ways. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave those in the section, the comment section below. The code, as always, will be hosted on my GitHub. And if you found the video to be helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.